Hello everyone, Alex Rules 37 here, back for another tutorial. This time it is not Minecraft, however it is Minecraft based. Today I'm going to show you how you can make Minecraft rigs of your own Minecraft character. Basically, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a 3D render of your Minecraft character or anything else. I'm going to show you how you can add blocks or tools or armor or anything you want, even name tags if you really want so. Um, want so, want to, if you, I don't really care, but today I'm going to show you the basics and then a little more advanced things. First off, we are going to be using Blender. Um, Blender is 100% free and it is actually a very good tool. A lot of people use it, especially a lot of pros, for modeling, um, rendering, animations, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I typically use Blender to model things, especially STL files for 3D printing, but recently I've just learned, well not recently, but I sometimes I make Minecraft rigs for thumbnails I have about a year ago for a video and I did recently, so I'm going to show you how to make them because I have gotten requests to do that. So you are going to need to download a few things. First, obviously, Blender. Again, you can just come to the site blender.org. It's a free download. It's a free site completely. If you download the newest version, it's most likely not going to be too different from what I'm using. I'm using a little older. I don't really download Blender all too much, but I'm sure in about 20 years, if you download the latest version, my Blender would still look pretty similar. Next, what you're going to need is the rig. So I am using the Black Plasma Studios rig. If you don't know who Black Plasma Studios are, they're a YouTube channel that makes a whole bunch of Minecraft animations. And I think they're really popular. I think they're number one, actually, for Minecraft animations. Um, but they didn't make the rigs themselves. It was made by someone, I forget who. I will link the video where I got this um, in the description, as well as everything else, including Blender. And the next thing I'll get into in a minute. Um, but basically, this will give you the uh, rig, this is the character, this is the character, but you can add armor to it, and this, I'm not too sure what it is, it's probably like the same thing as this, but it takes less space, but you can do less with it, and this, this is just something that you can ignore, like it says you can ignore it. You might not need this, and this is optional, but I'm also going to be using this, which is another Minecraft rig, I think it's made by the same person, I don't know, but basically, other than characters, this can add blocks to the game, and they're actually 3D blocks, they're not just square blocks, and it's actually pretty cool blocks, items, mobs, anything you want, so I can, I'll can i show you a little bit how to use that as well, but I'm mostly going to be showing you how I you do the character rigs. Anyway, that's all you really need to download it for the moment, so how we need to get the rig in here, we're going to go up to file, we're going to go append, do not do import, you're going to go append, and you're going to locate to your folder or your files where you downloaded everything. I just put it on my desktop and I'm going to use the standard rig. Actually, no, I'm going to use the armor rig. And you, once it's a, it's a blender file. So once you click it, it'll bring this. You want to go to object and then you want to do control A. Actually, no, in blender you just push A and then a pen from library. And this will give you your character. Also, I probably going to mention, I'll try my best to tell you the controls for Blender if you are a complete noob. I do not have the screencast thing, I don't think they have that in this Blender anymore, but um, to move around like this, you just hold the middle mouse button, so if you're on a laptop, that's probably not going to be easy for you. Um, to select things, you use your right click, not your left. Your, your left click just moves this thing around, it's kind of pointless for what we are doing with it, but basically your middle mouse button and your right click button to select different things but basically this is your character now I assume or I hope that your skin is not Steve so we are going to change that so we're gonna to have to go down here where it says object mode we want to go to pose mode so the reason why we want to do that object mode just selects this whole thing whereas we go into pose mode we can select all the individual bones here and we can move it and do certain things with it uh, so we want to click this guy right here um, if you push F, you can zoom into the object that you're selected to. Um, so we want to go here. Now over to the side here, we have a few different options on like things to do. We have modifiers and a whole bunch of different crap. But we want to go to this. This is te texturing. This is like a sphere. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. This this is all we really need to use to change the character. So. Uh, here we can get all of the textures used for our, our buddy here, so including the skin. 
So right now this is loading the image for Steve. We want to click X and you'll see that he goes away. So we are now we want to load a skin of our own. So to do this, you're going to want to get a downloaded version of your skin as in a P PNG form. I recommend PNG. I don't think anything else will actually work. And you want to get this or something similar to this. Um, if you have 3D helmets or stuff, I you, you might you probably are able to put it in. It depends on the rig model. I am not going to do that because I don't need to. Um, but one thing that you have to do before you do anything is you need to get rid of your eyes. So you can just do this by selecting your skin color and just getting rid of your eyes. I'll show you why you need to do that in a minute, but I already have this. I just renamed it Alex Anim Skin for animation and then you are able to get on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to skin, we're gonna click open where we got rid of our Steve skin and we are going to want to navigate to where we put our skin. So I put mine in MC props and there it is Alex and I'm skin so I'm gonna load it and there is my skin loaded on my character now next what you want to do is you probably don't want Steve eyes or purple eyes but this is also the same exact thing over here we just want to click eyes and instead of a PNG image this is just like a color wheel you can click this and you can select whatever color you want on my character my eyes are completely black so I'm just gonna set it to that and that should be all set but you can obviously mess around with this, change it to whatever you like or whatever your skin character is. Um, I think if you click this, you can also select a specific part of your screen. So if I click this, then I can get the same color eyes as my goggles. Uh, so that's also a nandy dandy tool, but I'm just gonna keep it black for now. Now we have the rig imported. So now it is time to put it in a pose. So I think I want him holding an iron sword. I'm gonna recreate sort of something what I have so it doesn't really matter where you start but I'm gonna start with the face not the head the face that's um, important you don't want you don't want to position the bones like anything like that until you know what you're exactly doing so I want my character to be looking at something and being a little scared or brave or something so the I you know it's kinda of hard to see this right now but these manipulate the eyes if you select the individual uh, balls here you can push G and you can move them and you can <laughs> select the individual pupils so if I were doing something like Kevin I could do that however if you just want to move them simultaneously you can hold down shift and select both of them or if you see this green little outline here you can also select this and that does the same exact thing so I want my character to be looking up something like that and that looks pretty that looks okay I guess <laughs> if you push G G can move items so it's just a friendly tip. Next, I want to raise the eyebrow up a little bit so I can push R for rotate. And since the eyebrows, the, the rig, it was on. Holy crap. Since the eyebrows on the rig were made to just move in one direction, if you push R, then they just go this way. I think it's why. I'm not sure. So maybe he's concerned or something. And his mouth, I think I can leave the mouth like that as the default. If you want to manipulate the mouth, then this bar right here manipulates the mouth. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. But anyway... You got a whole bunch of options here. You can just play with them. You can you can have no mouth. You can come on select. You can have you can set it to Alex so the arms can be smaller. You can restrict select. Um, I forget what this kind of means, but I don't really pay attention to it. If you want anti lag, I think this just gets rid of useless um, bones or like other sort of crap that you don't really need. But in this case, we're not really doing anything, so we don't need that. So I think that's all set with the face. Next, I want to get into his stance. So this base right here, this is, well, this is the base. Like I said, this can move the entire character. Um, but you might see you have these individual squares for the feet. So what I want to do, and this is what I do for all my rigs, you don't want to have your feet combined like this. So what I do is I'll move this this way a little bit and maybe a little back and then the complete opposite with this one. So they're kind of like this. Now, usually you're not gonna be, it looks kind of bad if you're standing straight up like this. So I'm gonna select this bone right here, which is my character's pelvis or my stomach or whatever. And this moves like basically my, my character, but not the base. Um, so this is, this is probably your second most important when it comes to moving your character in general. But if we move them down a little bit, 
you can tell that now he's sort of bending at his knees and that is kind of what we want. We might want to move him a little back, but not a whole lot. So that looks pretty good. Next we want to do the same thing with the arm. So we're going to select the top arm right here. We're going to push R for rotate and we're just going to kind of move him out a little bit. Now it's also important to mention if you want them to go in a specific way, not just where your mouse wants to take it, you can push R and then you can push X, Y, or Z. So you can do specific axes or axis or whatever you want to call them. So if I put R and Y, it can go this way and, and Z would always be up and down. So that's what I that's what I know. <laughs> um, but in this case, I'm not really too concerned with that. So we're, uh, next we're going to do is we're going to select this bottom part of the arm here and this only moves at the elbow. So if we push R, it can move as at this circular line here, as you can tell. Um, and there we go, maybe that's a little too much. I want this arm to be the one holding the sword. And this one we can just kind of bend up a little bit and then have this arm go back a little bit, like that. Um, I'm not gonna do a whole good job here, this is just like a basic demonstration. But this is basically my character. Maybe, actually, if we select up here, this is his torso, as you can tell down here. If we select R for rotate and Z, and we can spin on the axis, we can kind of have him turn a little bit. Uh, whoop a little bit come on like that and I think that looks pretty good maybe a little less there we go that looks pretty decent and his head we can kind of also turn on the Z axis or Z or whatever and maybe a little maybe a little up like that um, uh, you, you can see the Steve part anyway so I think that's my character all set I like that and now let's add give him his sword we're going to go File, Append, um, and here we're st we still remain in the character selection. So we're going to go back, and instead of the Plasma Rigs or the characters, we're going to go into Cycles Minecraft Rig. And this is the other uh, site that I showed you with all the blocks and items. So here we have items, blocks. We got another character rig, if you wish. We got simple mobs, and we got other mods and 3D blocks. But anyway, we want to go into Item. We don't want to go into block because the sword is an item. We want to go to object. We want to type sword in the search bar and we can get all the swords. I'm going to go with an iron sword because you know iron is the best ore in the game. And here we have the sword, which is, believe it or not, pretty relative in size to this guy here. Um, we want it to face this way. So we're going to push rotate and Z to rotate it on the axis. But if we push RZ and we can also type in a numerical value. So I did negative 90 there, so it, you know, rotated it that way. So also we're going to try to position it where he is, he is holding it. So let's kind of do that a little bit. Maybe bring it up a small bit more. And that looks pretty good. He kind of looking at something, holding his sword in place. Uh, now I think we should add some armor. I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm just going to show you how to add the armor. I'm just going to add a helmet. But basically you want to go up here and where you have your rig selected, uh, we want to have this drop down and since I got the armor one and by the way you have to get the armor one you want to append it if you want to have armor right here we have armor so we're just going to drop this down and here we can see all the individual armors so we have chain diamond gold iron and armor I think we're going to go with gold now and then we get the gold boots chest plate helmet and leggings so basically this is how this works in blender um, all of the armor is on him already but they're just not visible to the editor or the render. So that's what these buttons are for. If we select, uh, if we select, I forget how this works, uh, this one right here. So if we select this item right here, then we can see it. Um, so if we just select all of these, then we can see all of the uh, armor. However, okay, hold on, I just want him to have the helmet. No, wait, I don't know, okay, no, let's just have him have, oh no. <laughs> Let's have him have the chest plate. Now, even though we can see it here, um, I'm gonna go to the camera. If you can push the camera, I know you can go to the camera by pushing the zero button on your keypad. I don't think it, no, it doesn't work with your normal one. But anyway, uh, if we select the camera and then we push, not F, shift F, then we can move it around like this. And this positions the camera and by default, uh, your camera will spawn like this. Um, I will go into the camera settings at the end, but basically push F11, this renders it. And this is what we see. I, I don't have any lighting right now, so that's why it's dark. But you see that we have the gold here, the gold thing here, but not in the 
uh, whoa, what did I do? But we don't have it in the editor or the render. So that's what, that's more to do over here. So we have, what I basically mentioned, we have this selected to view in the editor, but now we need to select it to view in the render. So now if we push, no, why do I keep doing shift? And now if we push F12, then it'll render and you see that we have it here. So that's important. You want to select both of these or like just the, the camera one for it to render. I, I suggest having it so you can be able to see it too. Um, but basically that's the armor with the armor rig. It's pretty straightforward. I like this and I think we're going to keep it. So if we render it real quick, um, we just have this. And I don't think this is what you want it to look like. We want to add some light and maybe some background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push A for, not A, sorry, uh, shift A to add something and we want to add a lamp. I'm going to add a sun. So the sun I'm going to bring up here. We're going to push F to hover over to it. We're going to put it in front of the character behind the camera and then we want to rotate it on its X axis to point toward the character. It doesn't really matter it's, since it's the sun it's just going to light up the entire area so it really doesn't matter. And um, it is pretty close and it depends on how many items you have in the scene. However, I'm going to up in the strength to five and then we're going to push F12 to render and this looks a lot better. Maybe, maybe bring it down a little bit to maybe half. And this, in my opinion, looks very good. Um, I strongly, strongly suggest if you push F, um, control D, you can duplicate it. And I suggest adding a few lights like to different sides. Then we can obviously, we can see that a lot more of it is rendered than just this and that it depends on how you like it if you like it this way then go go for it i kind of like the shadow but if you're going to do a green screen which is what i'm going to do and i'm going to show you how to do it then you might not want to i don't really know you might have to experiment now i'm going to go over to the camera real quick i want to show you some thing i want to show you how you want to configure this because this all has to do with uh how you're image look. So if we go, if we push F11 and we go back, you can kind of see that this is all pretty grainy. And that all has to do with the sampling down here. So I have it set to render at 20 samples. Um, you don't need to know specifically how much this is, like what this does, but all you got to know is that the more samples you have, the better the image will look. So instead of 20, if I do 200 and then render this one uh, in slot 3, render in slot 3, it's going to take a lot longer than the 20 samples, but it is going to look 100 times better, literally. So this took about 20 seconds, 17 seconds, and it looks a lot better than that. So the more samples you have, the better. I suggest if you're just going to load this one image, have like have it to be the 500. Usually I set it to 200 or 300. That works good for me because I'm using them in thumbnails. You're not really going to see them well, but you can also fix them down here and a whole, you can do a whole bunch of crap. But um, anyway, that's just that. I know I'm be being very scientific when it comes to these, uh, these terms. But anyway, up here you can I have it set to compute on my GPU since I have one and the faster your computer is the faster it'll render. You can set the render settings for you know your GPU or whatever. You can configure this in here. So I have it set to run my GeForce 1050 Ti. That's just a little side note. It doesn't really matter too much. Make sure you push save user settings. Um, dimensions, you can set it. I have it set to 720p, but you might want to check your resolution. Sometimes I'll do 1080p, but I'm just going to do 720p for this instance. All this other stuff you don't really need to worry about. And if you are only have, if you're only rendering an image, then the frame rate really doesn't matter. And speaking of that, if you're only going to render an image down here for the keyframes, you want the end to be the same as the start. So this is how many frames there is going to be in your animation basically. So it's gonna be one frame, one image. Um, and if you want it to be an image, then what you wanna do is you want to go to output here and you wanna set it to PNG or a different picture, image, file, or JPEG. I, I suggest PNG really bad. And all this, if you're a beginner, none of this really matters, but it just like leave it as is. You might wanna play around with it. Maybe you can get better images if you want, but it really doesn't matter. You might not want to have a gray background here, and as you can tell in some of my uh, thumbnails, I obviously don't. 
So what I do there is, you, well, you can do two different things. You can upload an image or you can upload a whole background here and edit it if you want. The more you have in your editor, the longer it will take to render. I'm just going to tell you that now. But I typically don't do that. What I do is actually pretty cool. I do a green screen. Well, not pretty cool, but whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a mesh. I'm going to add a cube right here. Uh, bring it up right here. And I'm going to push S this time for scale. And then I'm going to push X so I can scale it this way. And then S again so, so I can scale it the Z wise like this. And if we render this one, oh, I have it set to 20 sam 200 samples. So we're just going to skip this. And if I render it again, and there you go, you have the back here. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to bring this back a lot. And then I'm going to go to the, the uh, texture here like I mentioned with what, what I showed you, sorry. With this character, I'm going to go new material. And I'm going to select this material to be green for a green screen. And if we run it there, then it'll be a lot easier in the editor to click this out. Now, yes, on your materials, you'll have this green glow. And there's really no way to fix it if you're going with this approach. However, you can, well, I mean, you can even notice that in some of my thumbnails, but there, I have no really good way to fix that and whatever. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate another sun to be behind the character to light up the green screen a little better. I think I like this. What we're going to do is we're going to render this into an image. So I want to do, instead of pushing F12, you want to push render animation instead of render image. Uh, just make sure back in the camera properties you have it set to what you want in this image in this instance wants to be an image so i have it set to png and we're just going to render animation or control f12 and this is going to render it fully and remember set it to you know your sample size i'm gonna set to 300 i really recommend i don't care what computer you have to set it to a really high number maybe like more than 300 maybe 500 i wouldn't go too high because there's a point where it's just kind of pointless but also, it's important to know that this folder right here is your output, so you just want to click this and you want to pick a uh, position where you want it to output to. Um, I suggest just outputting it to your desktop. And here we have the finished product of our animation or our render or whatever you want to call it. And if you did the green screen like I did, just load it in your video editor or your, not your video editor, your paint editor, your image editor. You want to select all the green and simply just push delete and you might this work very well but you're gonna see a little bit of green speckles around your character you can just go around and get rid of that it's a little time consuming but I'm not too worried about it right now but this is this is your image right here but anyway guys I think that is it for this episode here I hope you enjoyed if you want me to do more on this more advanced things I did mention you can do name tags I can show you how to do that as well it's a little more advanced but it's definitely something that you can do if you have the time and patience. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.